All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you were a combat sports fan, this weekend was probably the most craziest weekend you have witnessed in a while, okay? And I'm going to recap all of it. I'm going to be talking about Knuckle Mania, crazy fucking name, by the way, but BKFC, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. I'm also going to be talking about UFC Vegas 48, crazy situation there that happened and overall just kind of going over some things so first off if you guys are new to the channel please hit the subscribe button i upload every week on combat sports and current events if you're into that sort of thing do consider subscribing also if you're new and you like this video please hit the like button it helps the channel grow thank you guys for coming anyway this fucking weekend was insane. It was crazy. So I'm going to start with the UFC Vegas 48. So first off, Joaquin Buckley getting into a war, a technical battle, and being super exhausted after he's ending his fight and wins the fight by decision. And after the fight, he's going to get interviewed by Paul Felder. Now, Paul Felder obviously former MMA fighter, is, you know, in the commentating booth and he decides that he's going to go over there and interview Joaquin Buckley. Now, they're chatting it up. He is fucking exhausted. The guy is breathing through not his fucking lungs anymore, okay? Joaquin Buckley is breathing through any fucking part of his body that has a hole, okay? The guy is exhausted, but he's giving an interview the best of his ability, and you could tell that he was injured severely, something maybe with his, maybe with his lungs or something, maybe with the rib cage might have been broken or fractured. And you could just tell by the way that he was, you know, grunting, the way that he was making that noise, uh, you knew that something was wrong. It wasn't normal. So I was like, hey, Paul, stop interviewing him. Let him go to the back and fucking get some medical attention. Uh, Paul was just like, no, I'm just going to keep interviewing him. And uh, what's what's next for you, Joaquin? What's going on? How was that battle? This and this and that. Okay, going through the typical fucking spiel of a UFC commentator, right? Then Joaquin Buckley says, you know what? I'm so fucking tired. I've told you everything I can. I'm fucking hurt. Dale, Dale, get the fuck over here. Dale from the from the Detroit Survival Urban Training or whatever the name of that channel is, the guy with the mustache who does gun disarms and is possibly like some sort of commando figure comes over and is in Joaquin's corner. The guy is in his corner. Okay, first of all, that guy, super fucking famous, okay? That guy is super famous for a guy that does gun disarms and self-defense tactics and shit like that, okay? Now, I don't think that that guy's fully bullshit. I think that, you know, the way that he trains things and the way that he kind of comes off is a little bit of a gimmick sort of thing. But overall, maybe some of the gun disarms actually do kind of work. However, nothing really is understood more than a real life situation. So when it comes to those things, it's hard to grasp like how well those techniques are actually going to do. But it's pretty funny because there's a lot of memes that came out about him. But either way, this guy who does gun disarms and is in, you know, to police and criminal justice training and all of this stuff is in Joaquin Buckley's corner, a UFC contender's corner, cornering this guy and he wins. Now, as Joaquin is super tired and he gets he gets Dale over to the corner Dale is over here just looking super fucking, <laughs> Dale is looking so fucking just normal. Like he's just looking normal about it. He's like, yeah, you did a good job, this and that, whatever. And he was kind of confused at like why he was there in the first place. Like it was super fucking funny, but there's like a meme that's going around. It's pretty funny when you lie on a resume and you still get the job. That was definitely a fucking good meme. Whoever made that meme, good on you. But crazy fucking situation number one. Then also crazy situation, Johnny Walker. Okay, and let's just go through this. So my prediction for Jamal Hill and Johnny Walker, you guys know I picked Johnny Walker. Now, in the first round, Johnny Walker was actually doing pretty fucking good. And I know some of you guys are gonna be like, he was doing pretty good. Good fucking call. I know. But then on top of that, 
he starts to loosen up a little bit and he starts to, you know, land some shots. And I'm starting to see this and I'm like, fucking finish is coming. Johnny Walker's going to do it. I fucking told everyone. Then a 50-50 scenario. And this is what I mean by 50-50. Go watch Matt Mitrione and Fedor Emelianenko. That was a 50-50 situation where they both throw right hands from the orthodox stance. And with that being the case, they connect on each other. Now, I don't know exactly which stance both of them were in. Uh, one was definitely Southpaw. The other one was Orthodox. Either way, it doesn't matter. You get the point. What I'm saying is they both had a 50-50 shot. So both of them actually landed shots. Now, Johnny Walker landed. He hurt Jamal Hill. And it actually cracked Jamal Hill pretty hard. You could see him take a, a pretty big back step. The problem is, is that Johnny Walker was hit flush on the top of the head. Now, this is a little concerning because if you look at the shot again, Johnny Walker connects to Jamal Hill's like chin face area, which is a more dangerous shot for shutting the lights off. So in other words, Jamal Hill should be more hurt. However, Johnny Walker has zero chin left in him. Like he, if, if everyone talks about Amir Khan having a glass jaw, Johnny Walker at this point has a plastic chin. The guy has a plastic chin. He was hit on top of the head right here. And when you're hit on top of the head like that, you're supposed to walk right through that and keep going. He got hit on the head, did a crazy inflatable arm man type of uh, reaction and fell backwards and fell asleep. It looked like he fell asleep in the fucking octagon. It was absolutely insane. Okay, Jamal Hill, hats off to Jamal Hill. He did a really good job, great performance, good fucking knockout. But Johnny Walker, your your career is probably as good as done, dude. Your, your career is probably as good as done. I like you. I think you're a great fighter when it comes to actually exploding and fighting. But you have a plastic chin, dude, and you cannot continue to do this. You cannot continue to get fucking flatlined or wobbled in the way that you are i mean you look at that ryan span fight and that's like dude that's that's not fucking normal you know and then coming into this fight that's also not normal so i wish him well i wish that he recovers like i said man he needs to leave sbg he needs to leave fucking ireland and he needs to go to extreme couture maybe a tri-star um somewhere where you have real athletes who can grapple people who are really versed in grappling and become a major player in the light heavyweight division. If he can do that, if he can become a grappler and be more defensive, you know, technically and not get into these crazy exchanges, he might have a chance. But as of right now, he is good as done for me. Next thing up, is Bare Knuckle FC. Bare Knuckle FC this weekend was crazy, okay? Knuckle Mania 2 is I think what they were calling it. Um, Chad Mendez, Chad Mendez, who was a very big player in the UFC, fought Conor McGregor, fought Jose Aldo, some of the best fights you'll ever see, um, no longer in the UFC, now is with Bare Knuckle FC, and completely, completely stole the show. The guy had the most scariest knockout for, like, smaller dudes I've ever seen, okay? Fake to the body, went up to the head and completely like drop this dude. And like, it was, it happened so quickly that you were like, Jesus, Chad Mendez? Like you didn't explode like that in the UFC. I mean, there were some times where he did explode like that, but to that level, that's, you know, and you also look at his physique. He looks super, super jacked, okay? And he's always looked like pretty, you know, good physically. I think he's a, He's definitely a mesomorph for sure, like body type, but dude, he is fast and strong at the same time. And that's what makes me ask, is Bare Knuckle FC and Knuckle Mania testing these dudes? Because if they're not, I'm watching Bare Knuckle FC from now on because I need a sport where they are not testing dudes because I want the good old pride days back. Yes, I'm a big fan of pride, okay? You bring me Arlovsky, Fedor, Krokop, you give me all those guys back again with roids, I'm fucking happy. 
I'm, I'm good for it. I want to watch that shit, you know? So if Bare Knuckle FC is not testing, I'm a fan. Sign me the fuck up. But Chad Mendez looked super, super good. Now, I think he's on the juice. I think he's on the juice, and I think he's taking stuff. But that's just my opinion, and that's not provable, and that's not a fact, and I cannot confirm that. Chad Mendez, I love you. But be careful, because you never know when Vada may come around randomly and, you know, catch you slipping. Either way, good performance for Chad Mendez, uh, great performance from him. And then we also got to talk about the war between Julian Lane and Mike Perry. Now, Mike Perry won this fight. However, in the first round of this fight, Mike Perry threw a crazy right hand, countered Julian Lane, dropped him in the first round. And ever since that first round, Mike Perry was living on Confidence Avenue, okay? He was super confident the rest of this fight. However, against a guy like Julian Lane, who is going to stand in front of you and bang, bro, you cannot be that fucking confident and almost caught Mike Perry several times and countered Mike Perry several times and actually hurt him. Julian Lane actually rallied later on in the fight, which was kind of scary to see him get dropped in the first round, come back in you know the later rounds and completely put on a great performance. What a technical war that fight was. I mean, that fight was a great, great fight. Good to see that. I thought one of them was definitely going out for sure, but they are two warriors. Um, that's a rematch that they could easily sell and that would do numbers. That rematch would do absolute numbers and it was just a good fight to see overall. But Mike Perry, you know, he's he's really on the come up, man. Mike Perry is really doing his thing. He's living way better than he was living when he was in the UFC. You can see that he's less stressed out. He's got more things going on. He's happier. And good for him, man. Good for Mike Perry. He was uh, he was one of the favorites, one of the fan favorites in the UFC. But good to see that he is doing well in his other ventures. But that's about it. That's all that I want to talk about. Crazy weekend of combat sports. I just want to do a nice little recap reaction. Um, thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.